Welcome back everyone to another episode of Med School Mondays with Promo. Thanks for joining me again today. In case you missed any of the lectures from the last few weeks, click on the links below and it'll take you back to the right video. Well, what are we gonna do today? That is part one of the thyroid hormone. In part one, we're gonna discuss the synthesis, followed by the regulation, and followed by the effects of what the thyroid hormone has on the body. And then next week, we're gonna talk about the pathological forms. What happens when we have too little thyroid hormone and what happens when we have too much. So let's start off with the synthesis. What do we have drawn over here for you? I've said in red that this is the blood. This box looking figure over here is the thyroid follicular cell. And then this area over here is a follicular lumen. Step number one, thyroglobulin Tg is synthesized by this molecule referred to as tyrosine. Thyroglobulin is then packed into a vesicle and is secreted into the follicular lumen. Step number two, right over here. The iodide transport, also referred to as the iodide sodium co-transport, what's it doing? It's actively pumping iodide into the thyroid follicular cell. Well, why do we need that? We need this iodide so that it can be brought in all the way to the follicular lumen so that it can contribute to the synthesis of the thyroid hormone. Awesome. Step three, what's going on over here? Oxidation. Now oxidation is done by a specific enzyme referred to as the thyroid peroxidase. It's gonna take the iodide and convert it into iodine. And that's a very, very important step, again, by this enzyme, thyroid peroxidase. Now what do we have over here? We got these two medications, PTU, which stands for propyl thyroyuracil, and we've got methamazole. These inhibit that specific enzyme, thyroid peroxidase. Well, why are we trying to inhibit this enzyme? Well, next week when we talk about too much thyroid hormone, these medications help. If these medications inhibit that step, then ultimately we're not synthesizing too much thyroid hormone. Well, step four, what's going on over here? Organification. Organification, again, is done by the same thyroid peroxidase enzyme. So, of course, the same medications will inhibit that step. Well, what is organification, first of all? The tyrosine residue, so the same tyrosine over here is reacting with the iodide now and it's gonna form a few different, uh, a couple different molecules. MIT, which stands for monoiodotyrosine, and DIT stands for diiodotyrosine. Another important concept I wanna illustrate right now. If we have too much iodide, too much iodide is actually going to inhibit this organification step. That's referred to as the wolf shakeoff effect. We're gonna talk about that again next week in next week's lecture. The fifth step over here is referred to as the coupling reaction. Same enzyme again, guys, same enzyme, thyroid peroxidase. Well, what's, uh, if, we, if it's the same enzyme, then of course we can use the same medications to inhibit it. Awesome. So what does coupling reaction actually mean? Well, we said we've already generated an MIT and a DIT. Well, now if an MIT and a DIT come together, what do you form? So we refer to that as T3 triiodotyrosine, okay? If a DIT and a DIT come together, we call it a T4. T4 stands for thyroxine. What you have to remember also is that T4, thyroxine, is secreting large, large, large quantities compared to 3T. However, T3, triiodotyrosine, is the biologically active molecules. So all of this is happening, is it happening in the follicular lumen. This is referred to as an iodinated thyroglobulin. It's gonna stay in the follicular lumen until a very important signal is received. What signal is that? Well, the signal that we receive is going to be a stimulation signal by the enzyme TSH, thyroid stimulating hormone. We're gonna talk about that in a couple moments in the regulation section. But the thyroid stimulating hormone is finally gonna stimulate the thyroid follicular cell, and only then, and only then, this iodinated thyroglobulin is going to come into the thyroid follicular cell via a process called endocytosis. The thyroglobulin molecule is broken down by lysosomal enzymes. The lysosomal enzymes will break it down and release the T3 and the T4, which we'll talk about in the next step. T3 and T4 will make it out into the circulation. Well, what happens with the rest of it? The MIT and the DIT undergoes a process of deiodination through deiodinase. And what happens? We remove the leftover iodide and it can actually be recirculated and reused for more synthesis of thyroid hormone. Step seven, release of the T3, T4. Once T3 and T4 is released, most of it's gonna be bound by this molecule referred to as the TBG, thyroid binding globulin. 
Now, important, important concept. When it's bound to TBG, it's not active at all. So T3 and T4 is not active. There, you gotta remember a couple things that will increase the synthesis of TBG and some that will decrease the synthesis of TBG. Pregnancy and oral contraceptive pills are both high estrogen states. So it's gonna increase the synthesis of TBG, whereas hepatic failure and the use of steroids will decrease the synthesis of TBG. But what you wanna remember is that we're actually measuring how much is considered to be free hormone. The amount of free hormone that's in the blood, it's gonna tell us if the patient has normal thyroid function, euthyroid, if the patient has too much thyroid function, referred to as hyperthyroidism, or if the patient has too little thyroid hormone, referred to as hypothyroidism. So that's what we're measuring over here, the free hormone concentration, okay? So the last step is, well, what happens next? The T3 and T4 is going to circulate and act on its uh, uh, specific target tissues. At the peripheral tissue, T3 is going to directly cause some sort of effects that we'll talk about in two seconds. But we gave a nice mnemonic over here referred to as 4Bs. What's happening with the T4? We said the T4 is not in a biologically active form. It needs to convert into T3 by the specific enzyme called over here, 5 prime diiodinase. A couple of the medications, again, we'll talk about in next week is, again, PTU, propyl thiouracil will inhibit this step, as well as the use of glucocorticoids. Great, guys, great. Now we've talked about the synthesis. Let's move over to, on this side, to the regulation. Like always we said, the hypothalamus is the control center of the brain. The hypothalamus is releasing a hormone called TRH, thyroid releasing hormone. It works on the anterior pituitary gland, which releases this hormone, TSH, the thyroid stimulating hormone. Once the thyroid stimulating hormone reaches the thyroid follicular cell, the cell is stimulated to release the thyroid hormone. And that's what we have over here, the T3 and T4. Awesome, now that we discussed what stimulates the release of T3, T4, let's talk about well, what inhibits the release of T3, T4. Well, we have uh, just regular negative feedback again. As T3 and T4 increase in concentration, they're gonna go back to the hypothalamus and they're gonna go back to the anterior pituitary gland, telling them not to release the TRH as well as the TSH. Somatostatin works on the anterior pituitary gland right now and it decreases the response to the thyroid releasing hormone so that less TSH can be released. The next thing I want to draw your attention to is this uh, big bubble over here, TSI, stands for thyroid stimulating aminoglobulins. These aminoglobulins will stimulate the anterior pituitary gland, releasing more T3 and T4 than we normally need. You're going to see this in next week's lecture when we talk about Graves' disease. Graves' disease is an autoimmune disease which releases too much T3 and T4. And the last concept, so that it'll also help you in next week's pathology, when patients are hypothyroid, it's going to stimulate prolactin, which will cause sexual problems, which we'll discuss next week, and you guys will have a whole week to review that concept until we meet again. The third concept today that we're gonna discuss is the effects of thyroid hormone. Like we said, we have this nice mnemonic for you guys, referred to as the four Bs. And I'm not talking about four bumblebees, but if it helps, think about four bumblebees. Bumblebee number one. What's bumblebee number one gonna do? brain maturation. We're talking about brain maturation in uh, the perinatal period in life as well as adulthood. Second thing is bone growth. Now I know last week you guys were with us and we said that the growth hormone is the most important hormone for growth. But the thyroid hormone also helps out the growth hormone. The third thing is beta adrenergic effects. Now think about the organs such as the lungs and the heart. So what's going on in the heart? It's gonna increase the heart rate, it's gonna increase the stroke volume, it's gonna increase the cardiac output, and it's gonna increase the contractility of the heart. In the lungs, when it acts on the lungs on the beta-1 receptors, what does it do? It increases the ventilation rate. So ultimately, what does it do? It's gonna increase the circulation of oxygen, so more oxygen delivery to all of the tissues of the body. The fourth B, the last bumblebee, it's gonna increase the BMR. BMR stands for basal metabolic rate. Well, how does it do that? It increases the activity of the sodium potassium ATPase pump. Once it does that, it increases oxygen consumption, it increases the respiratory rate, and it increases body temperature. That's it guys, that was thyroid hormone for you guys in a nutshell. Uh, you know, I'm pretty excited for next week, we get to talk about the pathology of the thyroid hormone. We'll discuss both the hypothyroidism as well as hyperthyroidism. Until next week, I want you guys to give this video a thumbs up. Make sure you guys share the video with all of your friends. Definitely subscribe to the channel and make sure to comment and let me know what you guys liked about the video and what you want to see in a future video. So, I'm going to sign off for now. We'll see you guys next week on Med School Mondays with Promo.